waiting for those pop-ups to come in so we can get rid of them. No, they're not coming up. They will, though, in a minute. There they go. Oh, so it started with me coming in to sit down? No. Oh. I didn't see it. The go live button. <clears throat> that was me yesterday. <laughs> We're going to sing a song called Yesu, Yesu, Fill Us With Your Love. It's hymn number 980, but you will notice, perhaps, that there is no 980 in your hymnal. It stops before that. But my hymnal, which is the guitar edition, uh, does have 900. It has a gray border on here that says these are extras that they gave the guitarists. Aha, because we're special. <clears throat> so, sorry you can't sing along. Uh, although you might know it, or at least you'll catch on to the, uh, you can catch on to the, uh, refrain. Refrain. Mm -hmm. Or chorus. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet, Master who pours out himself for them. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Chapter 1, verse... When I start at verse 5, I think? Verse 5, up to chapter 2, verse 2. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I think I've made reference to this before. You remember that commercial for dish soap, palm olive, I think, with the Mabel, no. Mabel, and the in there uh, at this um, nail salon. Oh, yeah. And talking about this dish soap is so wonderful, and she says, "You're soaking in it." Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're soaking in it. 
Oh, my hands are soaking in dish soap? Yes, it's so wonderful for you. When we think about sin, uh, and when, when John says, I'm writing these things to, so you don't sin, but if anyone does sin, it sounds like sin is a, you know, it's a, it's a thing that might happen, maybe tomorrow or, or this week one time. No, you're soaking it. Uh, and John knows this. But this is, how do you handle, how do you handle, uh, when you know that, when you know that you will fail, when, when you know that this is something I need to do, but I am not going to be able to be completely successful with this, I'm going to fail, then why would I even try to do it? But, but John is saying, no, I'm, I'm writing so that, you, that, so that you don't sin. I'm going to give you these instructions. That is, it's important, yet you grow in faith. Except, of course, we know you're going to sin. You're, you're going to fail. You're not going to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You're not going to love your neighbor as yourself in many different ways. But we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We're in the light. And not in the darkness. We're in the light. Uh, we're tempted to say, oh, it's so dark. Oh, it's so bad. And um, to look around us, and you can always find you can always find reasons to say, "Wow, it's really dark. Uh, things are getting worse." Right? That's never been any different. And people who are oriented to feel that way or to see the world that way uh, have been able to tell me in conversation, "Well, look at this. Well, look at that. Well, we'll see this over here. This shows that." The end is near. Yeah, in, indeed. And yet, no. We are in the middle of all this. And yet we still have hope that we may not sin, that, that, that we may obey the Lord and follow him. John is still giving instruction, and John is writing at the end of the New Testament. Not only the end of the physical book, but, but late in the first century, uh, in a time of particular persecution, and he's giving them hopeful instructions for how to follow Jesus. And he says, uh, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, well, we walk in darkness, then, then we're lying. We're not practicing the truth. Is, is this darkness and light thing going on? He says, you're in the light. You are in the light. You're walking with Jesus. The world is dark. I get that. But, the end is not yet. John, the famous prophet of the end in his revelation, is still saying, the end is not yet. You are to follow Jesus today. I came across this in an article this morning. Karen and I were talking about it. I don't know if this is a good application or not. Um, uh, at the uh, When Donald Trump was elected, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists advanced the doomsday clock closer to midnight because we have just moved closer to the end of the world nuclear war and so on because because we elected a president that they didn't like but right now when when there's a war going on a shooting war with missiles and tanks and everything uh, with a nuclear power that has been talking about you know, and unlimbering their nuclear weapons and so on. They're talking about, well, what about low-yield nukes? And could we do They're not moving the doomsday clock forward. What's going on? Well, as somebody reminded us, these are just some people at a magazine. That, that's what this doomsday clock is. It's some people at a magazine. All of your fears, all of the, oh, this is dark, oh, this is dark, well, this is some people at a television station who tell you, fear this, right? This is some people who are writing, writing newspaper articles. They're saying, be very scared. This is, this is people who, if they, if they studied history, would have to say, well, you know, we've been through this. We've been through that. These things have happened before. This is difficult. Yep, the world is very dark. You walk in the light. You are not, I mean, newspapers, websites, 
They all make their money by making you afraid. That is the, that's how they make, or making you interested. Making you click on something or look at something. That's the only thing. Getting your eyeballs. What do you need to be paying attention to? You need to be listening to the Lord. You're looking at his world. We're sitting here with these birds. <laughs> the cardinals especially with this fresh snow. Oh, it's gorgeous. Uh, this is God's world. And he is not concerned about a doomsday. And so we continue following Jesus and walking in the light. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's the propitiation for our sins. Not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Ukraine, Russia, all those places. United States. United States. Our sins are covered. Hey, it's not so bad. We're going to live in the light today. Heavenly Father, other people, there, there are many people shouting, whispering, warning. It's dark, it's dark. But we're with you. And it's light with you. Lord, help us to see our world in truth, the dark and the light, and recognize what has overcome. You have overcome the world. Let us follow you today. And if we sin, if we don't love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength every moment, oh Lord, we know we will not. If we don't love our neighbor as ourself, oh <laughs> that's so hard. Our sins are covered. Our sins are covered by your son Jesus. And we are in him. Healed, restored, forgiven, alive. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.